Are you interested in the storyline of Black Ops 6 Zombies? Of course you are, and I know that I am. However, I feel like some people are struggling to keep up, as I feel like a major setback to the current Dark Aether story is the way that some of the most important information for the future was presented before. What feels like it will be the main storyline in Black Ops 6 was largely set up in Intel in Black Ops Cold War and not ever really presented to the player directly. When you hear discussions on zombies and you hear the name Samuel, a large portion of you may not even really know who that is, or maybe you do and you simply just want a nice catch up before Black Ops 6. Either way, in this video, let's run it back to the beginning of the Dark Aether story to try and quickly nutshell everything we might need to know for Black Ops 6 as fast as possible. This video will be a recap of all of the main events from Cold War Zombies to Modern Warfare 3 Zombies that will be key to understanding Black Ops 6 Zombies. There will be quite a few major plot points we do not discuss in this video and that is because I am only going to be covering what I feel is relevant for Black Ops 6. This video should also serve as a good catch up before Black Ops 6 is out. And I've already made a full video on the entire Cold War Zombies storyline linked in the description if you would like a more in-depth look. So with that being said, if you are interested in the storyline and you know of friends that are too, be sure to send it to them so they can be ready to experience the Dark Aether story climax with you. To keep the pacing as best as we can, I'm going to cut out any info that's not extremely relevant to the main plot and put all sources in a document linked in the description. This way we don't have to constantly stop to listen to intel, but if you want proof for where this information is coming from, like I said, it will be linked below. If you want videos with a more in-depth look and the intel included, there are quite a few story breakdowns on my channel already that I will link in the description as well. Now then, let's begin. In a time now forgotten, the world was trapped within a never-ending cycle of suffering. Universes of life formed to be destroyed, only to be formed and destroyed again, and again, and again. Until during one of these fateful loops, four heroes discovered a way to end the suffering in the multiverse once and for all, and replace the Doom's multiverse with a single, safe timeline. These heroes gave their lives so that this new world could be formed, and in the forthcoming destruction of the multiverse, only two souls survived. Primus and Ultimus are gone. A young girl named Samantha Maxis, a young boy named Eddie Richthofen. Together, they walked into this new timeline, holding hands in the hope for this new world and a better tomorrow. The one event here that matters to us is their appearance in this new world. All the ages of the characters we've seen seem to suggest that they arrive in the exact same year they left, the prior timeline, in 1963. Our first look at the Dark Aether Saga comes from Black Ops Cold War. We begin during the aftermath of World War II in Moscow, Poland, as a lone Russian soldier known as Zykov walks into a bunker and it is sealed behind him. He enters to shut down a particle accelerator the Germans left running during World War II, and when he discovered that it had created a gateway to a nightmare realm, he knew what he must do. He had to enter the gateway and close it from the other side. His sacrifice would ensure the world would be saved. We next jump to the Cold War, the 1980s specifically November 1983. A much more grown-up Samantha Maxis approaches a phone in Berlin, Germany. Samantha uses the phone to contact a friend in the CIA, Gagori Weaver. Weaver had history with Samantha in the past. We learn through Cold War intel that Samantha had been rescued by Weaver when they first met, though not face-to-face, -face, back in the Iranian hostage crisis of 1979. This would be an important factor in establishing their relationship with one another, and the trust she would build for him over time. This trust was the reason he was the one getting this call. Samantha had found out about a new zombie outbreak in this new world, and due to her prior knowledge of the undead from the Aether story, immediately recognised it as a problem. She would need help solving it, and only someone who truly trusted her would believe what she had to say. She sends proof to Weaver of the outbreak in the form of a stolen videotape, and asks him to come to stop what's happening. Meanwhile, the US government is busy trying to react to the outbreaks of undead happening around the world. A Cladison meeting is held on November 3rd, 1983, as government sets out to create a task force to deal with these outbreaks. A mysterious and at one time unnamed man steps forward with a plan. His superiors lash out at him for speaking out of turn, as he was merely accompanying someone else to this meeting. But the impressive thoroughness of the documents and planning prove he has extensive knowledge in these matters. This man, only mentioned by his title of Associate Deputy Director of the Office of Extra Regular Activities, is appointed the new head of the department created to stop and contain 
all outbreaks, the department of Requiem, and he got to choose the name Requiem even. Weaver is hand selected as the strike team leader for Requiem by this director, and he also selects three others to head up the other departments, Dr. Gray, Carver, and Dr. Strauss. Gray was an expert in unusual science, Carver a decorated veteran, and Dr. Strauss had actually worked at the location in World War II that they were now headed to, a particle accelerator in Moscow, Poland. While their primary mission was to enter the facility in Moscow and shut down the machine, Weaver had another mission in mind, save Samantha from whoever she thought was after her, likely the group responsible for restarting the particle accelerator. The Soviet organization known as the Mega Group, until recently considered a band of quack scientists, had recently hired a handful of the USSR's brightest minds and fiercest soldiers to establish Soviet supremacy. One of these scientists was a US defector and a true genius, Dr. William Peck, with a supposed IQ higher than Einstein himself, though it's unclear if that is fabricated. Peck did not take long to restart the cyclotron at Morisco and continue to the next Omega base in Vietnam. Samantha would follow behind him and end up caught and kidnapped by Omega Group. Weaver, once he was out, would send the strike team to rescue her. June 15th, 1984. They arrive and confront Peck, only to find from Peck that he had thrown Samantha into the dark ether some time prior. The strike team worked together with Samantha's comrade, who initially informed them of her kidnapping, that being Sergei Ravanov. However, for her inside the dark ether, it had been a much longer time and she was suffering from extreme side effects. Her personality had been irreparably damaged and changed, and she was suffering from an extreme case of amnesia. Ravanov returns to the field and Samantha is taken to the Requiem medical wing. As Samantha recovers, Requiem begin to combat a newfound enemy, the entity controlling the monsters of the Dark Aether and trying to take our world, the Forsaken. It led the armies of the Dark Aether in an attempted invasion of our world. Requiem begin communication with Zykov, the World War II soldier from the beginning, still trapped inside the Dark Aether, and formulate a plan to both save him and defeat the Forsaken. Meanwhile, Peck had also been communicating with Zykov and developing technology for a mega group, and they too were attempting to save him. He communicated to Peck that whoever could save him first would be able to capture the Forsaken and win the war with his power. Peck begins construction on a machine to capture and hold the Forsaken. Samantha, after some time in the medical wing, is sent to Block 8, a special facility for special people like her, according to the director of Requiem. Here, he interrogates her and experiments on her, helping her to bring out the psychic abilities she has. While she initially suffers, she ends up using her powers to rescue the strike team from a mega group in Berlin and says that she now understands and appreciates why the director did these things to her. In their interaction, she does not recognize the director, and he is behind blacked out glass and using a voice changer. However, the director says that he knows both of her and Weaver, and they have history. We will discuss that history a bit later, but for now, we need to stay on track and finish the Cold War storyline. Requiem and Omega's race to save Zykov comes to a head, and during their confrontation, Peck finishes his machine and opens the gateway. Zykov comes out, thanking Peck for his help, and then immediately transforming. He had been the Forsaken all along, and succumbed to the Dark Aether's corruption, becoming the all-powerful lord of the Dark Aether. Betrayed, Peck begins to fight for his life and attempts to escape as Requiem try and combat the Forsaken. Just as all seems lost, Samantha flies in, fully utilizing her powers and begins to battle with the creature. The Forsaken almost wins, and as outbreaks begin to open across the planet, Samantha gets a determined look on her face. She says, I know what I must do, and flies into the portal in the chest of the Forsaken. This weakens him and allows him to be trapped by Requiem using Peck's machine, but also traps her into the now sealed Dark Aether. Peck narrowly escapes, now scarred to a gas leak, and Requiem strike team helicopters away, leaving Ravanov in the field. However, when they land, they are arrested, along with Weaver, Grey, Carver, and Strauss. As they are escorted away, we see the director typing on his terminal, confirming he made the order to arrest them. As he stands up and leaves his Requiem office, we find see his face. Eddie Richthofen had been the director all along. On his desk, we see two items. The first, a snow globe of Dr. Monty's house from the Ether storyline where he stayed, implying that he does still hold memories from the Ether story. Interestingly enough, Samantha Maxis, whilst inside the house, had a snow globe of the very house she resided in. Is this one and the same snow globe? Is this just a reference that Eddie remembers these events or is there more to it? The second item is a photo, which is the key piece in connecting all of this to Black Ops Six, a photo of Eddie, a woman, likely his wife, and their young son. Eddie left Requiem and headed off to begin the next phase in his greater plan, which we know very little about, Project Janus. The other photo on his desk 
disc shows that he used to be a US Air Force pilot, operating the Blue Baron, a spin on the real-life Red Baron. Eddie left Requiem and headed off to begin the next phase in his greater plan. With this information, we can round back to that history that Eddie said he shared with Samantha and Weaver. Throughout communications with each other and journal entries across Black Ops Cold War's intel, Samantha and Weaver reveal a story of a dark moment in their past. Weaver had been ordered on an assassination mission by the CIA, of whom he was given this intel specifically by Samantha. In searching for intel on his target, he ended up once again in contact with Samantha. She gave him intel on the target's location, as well as the intel he needed to make his move. She said the boy, Samuel, is with his mother. This meant the target would be home alone and Weaver could make his move. After attempting to assassinate the target, Weaver set fire to his house to hide the assassination. It was only once he was outside that Weaver learned of an error in his intel. The boy was with his mother, but both were inside the house and were now burning to death. In horror, Weaver ran back to Samantha's apartment and spent the night crying in her arms. They both agreed that this event would surely come back to haunt them. This information, I believe, is the single biggest plot point in all of Cold War for the future. It seems very obvious, looking at all of the information laid out here, that Weaver's assassination target was Eddie himself, evidenced by the large scar seen on the throat of his model and his eye. And the mother and child that Weaver accidentally murdered are the two in the photograph with Eddie on his desk. This would explain why Eddie handpicked Weaver for Requiem, knowing that at the end he was going to have him arrested, and also allowed Samantha to be thrown in the dark ether. We actually find out in the final intel that we get from Peck that he was working with Eddie the entire time as a double agent and actually threw Samantha into the dark ether under his orders. This makes sense considering immediately afterwards her powers were awakened and was a key part in defeating the Forsaken. It seems as though all events in Cold War went according to Eddie's plan, carefully orchestrated. Well, all except one. Peck survived the explosion that everyone thought he died in. This is shown to us in the post credit scene of Cold War. It is set five years after the end of Cold War in 1990. Peck requests a boat to take him somewhere in the middle of the Pacific Ocean off Japan and says he is looking for old friends. With that, we now have a decent grasp on where this story will go next. Eddie will continue with Project Janus, likely some sort of plan to bring his family back if potentially somehow their souls remain in the dark ether, whether it is just of his boy or his wife as well is currently unclear, but there are indications that he might be an ethereal orb in the dark ether. But Eddie, now that all of his plans are in motion, will likely think that he has won and the rest is easy. Peck, however, will likely show up in Black Ops 6 and rescue Requiem, setting off a Peck vs Eddie storyline in the game. But that's not our next stop. To get the full context, we need to jump back in time once again to World War II. After the siege of Stalingrad in 1944, a branch of the German military focused on occult sciences called Die Wahrheit made their move. They kidnapped the partner of a brilliant occult researcher named Gabriel Kraft, and used their life as blackmail to force him to work for them. In his work for Die Wahrheit, Kraft would research, locate, and obtain occult artifacts before trying to find out if they could be used for Die Wahrheit's purposes. Eventually, after obtaining real functioning relics connected to ancient demons, from the Dark Aether, and thanks to the Cyclotron in Morisco being activated, Kraft would assist Devarheit in causing an outbreak. Kraft recruited four allied soldiers to aid him in defeating Devarheit and the demon Cortifex helping their leader, Wolfram von List. Throughout the events of Vanguard, Kraft explained his past to them. He was chosen because he had knowledge of the book that Devarheit was seeking to repair, the Tome of Rituals. The Tome had extensive knowledge of Dark Aether magics, but in fear of its power being used against them, an ancient group known as the Societe Occult split up and took its individual pages to different parts of the world. In his research, Kraft had learned much from one such person, Alistair Rhodes, from the Chaos story being reintroduced into the Dark Aether story. His notes and journals proved invaluable in advancing Kraft's knowledge. By the time the war ended, the Dark Aether was sealed once more and the Cyclotron was shut down by Zykov, only to be opened up later by Omega Group. Divarheit and the demon Cortifex were defeated. Kraft tragically would find out his partner Sasha had been killed a long time ago. He would take the remaining artifacts, his journal, and go alone into post-war Germany. His fate since is unknown.
Our last stop before Black Ops 6, Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, a quick setup for its setting, long after the events of Cold War, and even the events of Black Ops 6 Zombies in the 2020s, 2021 to be specific, a new outbreak begins. A force of mercenaries named Terminus Outcomes, led by Jack Fletcher, breaks into a high security vault hidden under a building in Uzbekistan. Inside this vault, the corpses of the Requiem heads, Weaver, Carver, Gray and Strauss, each of their old, rotting corpses was connected to a machine sitting between them. The mechanism contains four slots for dark ether vials. Two already empty and two have vials in them. The vials contents move and glow a wild blue and purple colour. These vials end up broken and cause a zombie outbreak. The United States government activates a plan in motion after the events of Cold War, in case events like this ever happen again. Operation Deadbolt. The events of Modern Warfare 3 have yet to come to a close still, so instead of retelling a partially unfinished plot, let's talk on the important characters and events who seem to have history around the undead. We will use the these characters pass and what they tell us about them to fill in more of the time period around Black Ops 6. Firstly, Jack Fletcher. We learn from Fletcher's CIA bio that he served in the 90s at a place called Terminus Island. In prior videos, I've gone into more detail on Terminus Island, but for the sake of the pacing here, I will keep it short. Terminus Island is almost certainly the location that Peck was pointing to in the ending of Cold War, and this means it is the location where the Requiem heads were sent after being arrested. This is also likely the map that we see within the gameplay teaser for Black Ops 6 zombies. This means that during this time, Jack Fletcher would be taking orders directly from Eddie, and may have even crossed paths with the members of Requiem before. And considering he named his Terminus group Terminus Outcomes, whatever happened there clearly had a large effect on his motivations. Secondly, Crystal Miller from Deadbolt. Miller is the quartermaster of the Deadbolt team, and was specifically chosen for this job because of one unique factor. She has prior experience with the undead. While all the files on it are supposedly classified and hidden, Crystal recounted to Ravenov some details of her experience. Combined with other small tidbits she has mentioned here or there, we can determine that sometime in her early life, while she was a child, she had to deal with the undead. Around the time of Black Ops 6's approximate setting, a small town called Liberty Falls was apparently overrun with undead, and at the time she lived there, Ravanov is legitimately shocked she escaped alive. So her story is clearly true. Lastly, Ava Jansen. Ava, as we recently learned, is the biological child of Samantha Maxis and Sergei Ravanov, carried to term by Elizabeth Grey as a surrogate. Grey would raise Ava for a few years before recording a final message to Ava in 1996 and giving her away to the Jansons. Ravanov would be chosen as the one to stay alive and protect Ava, and the rest of Requiem seem to connect to the machine and die shortly after. It is seen in the background of the cutscene we learn this in. Ava has a connection to the Dark Aether unlike any we have seen before. When she was born, a mirror half of her was born in the Dark Aether simultaneously. This mirror half is, as of Modern Warfare 3, controlling the Dark Aether outbreaks and trying to combine with her. What we don't know is why exactly this mirror copy was born, and why Ava is so special. Was it the blood of Requiem and their contact with the Dark Aether, or could it have been something special done during the artificial insemination of the egg, or could it be because the egg of Samantha was contaminated due to her Dark Aether exposure and powers? Or is it something entirely differently? Judging by her age, three years old in 1996 and close to 30 in Modern Warfare 3, we will find out in Black Ops 6. By the time you see this video, Black Ops 6 Zombies may already be out and playable, so feel free to stop here if you have, and consider this video a catch-up. If not though, let's try and figure out what we are going to see in it together, using what we've already discussed so far. It seems as though the largest through line in this storyline so far is the story of Eddie Richthofen, Samantha Maxis, and Gregory Weaver, as well as Dr. Peck. Every other character or major event seemed to draw back to at least one of them. Ava is the child of Samantha Maxis, Liberty Falls and Terminus Island both seem to be under the control of Eddie in the 1990s. Seemingly, Samantha and Weaver's mistake with Eddie's wife and son seems to be the core behind everything. But let's dig a little deeper. Judging by the dates of the Cold War post credit scene with Peck, Fletcher's term at Terminus Island, and Grey's tape to Ava, Black Ops 6 likely takes place somewhere within the range of 1990 to 1996. This, however, is very long for the normal length of time these games have been set in. Most of the Dark Aether story games take place in a year or less, so it's very possible only a small part of this range will be key to Black Ops 6. It's a bit weird as well 
Well, that Jack Fletcher seemingly served on Terminus Island from 1991 to 1993, but Peck was seemingly heading there in 1990. Did Peck fail to rescue Requiem and he was brought in for further security afterwards? Maybe the game won't begin in 1990 like we previously thought, and could potentially be their escape a year or so after. As to why he was discharged in 1993, it's unclear as well. Other things we are likely to see, based on what pieces in all of these stories we are missing, Fletcher's reason for his discharge from Terminus, why he named his group Terminus Outcomes, how Miller survived or Liberty Falls, Peck's plan to get his revenge on Eddie and save Requiem, basically serving as an anti-hero, Peck doesn't have any agenda to one particular group or person, he's in it for himself. But in the five year gap between 1985 and 1990, in him learning the identity of the director, he is now doing the right thing. We also don't know how Ava was specifically created, how the Requiem heads end up dying together and why, how Requiem failed to save Samantha, potentially learning the fate of Gabriel Kraft, and most importantly, what exactly Project Janus really is. The two launch maps though for Black Ops 6 Zombies seem to be both Terminus Island and Liberty Falls in West Virginia. The entirety of Cold War built up to the reveal of Eddie's son, Samuel, as well as teasing some greater plan known as Project Janus. I believe that Janus is some sort of plan by Eddie to bring back his son, Samuel, either back from the Dark Ether or back to life. Perhaps his son's memories are within the orb. Whatever the case, I believe Eddie will succeed in his plan and we will bear witness to it, perhaps even help him. And during his plan's execution, many of the pieces will be set in play to lead to Modern Warfare 3's story, such as the creation of Ava and the death of Requiem. I also think we may see some sort of connection between Eddie and Kraft. Eddie may have already had him taken to a black site or had his research confiscated. My reasoning for this is, Strauss explicitly said that he found all of Kraft related intel in the Requiem archives, and it had been there since the beginning. This means Requiem was founded off of Kraft's research. What do you think? Have I missed anything important in your mind? Is there anything else you'd like to see in Black Ops 6? Let me know in the comments below. Sources again are linked in the document in the description, and be sure to check out my other videos going more in depth on topics like this. With that being said, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.